There's a wind advisory, like, warning today. It's there was one last night you should have seen me. Insane the last, like, three days. So what's the, when they warn, when you get in your car, you type in the location of where you're going, and it goes, warning, wind advisory. What, okay, I'm driving. Should I be worried that, like, the wind is going to knock over my no, car? No, it's, it's, you've never, you've never driven where it was, like, very windy outside, and it's actually, like, hindering your driving. Like, it's oh, so I'm, windy out. Maybe, like, coming back from, like, Coachella or something. Yeah, Especially, I guess I know what you're like, talking even, about. But no, like, worse than, like, a Coachella wind. This is, like, th- like turbulence wind. Like, it's so windy where it's it'll almost... It'll, like, pull you. It'll pull your car just a little bit. It's, like, not nothing crazy, but still, it's, like, they should or warn you. if that, anybody has a Jeep, every time you turn your car on, there's an advisory for some sort of weather that you have to, like, accept. Because it's a Jeep. Literally every time. <laughs> Especially wait, like the Jeep I, Grand wait, Cherokees, I, right? I never got that. My Jeep. Your Jeep didn't have a screen. Oh, it also didn't have. <laughs> Do Wranglers tip over as much as. Cher- Grand Cherokees are the ones that tip over a lot. I feel right? like that's a myth everybody's parents told them. I saw a video, though, one time of like a road test of a Jeep Grand Cherokee, and it was like, wah, wah, wah. Like, it was pretty intense. But I you, don't know. You, turn, you, turn sharp, you turn sharp enough, and you'll get that thing on the side. Yeah. A Jeep? Yeah. You should attempt it. You, you'll get it on its side. Are people still doing ducking? Is that a thing where you leave the little yes. rubber ducky? Do you have a bunch of ducks in your... I've only got ducked once. I thought I was being trafficked. Oh, okay. <laughs> Please don't duck. I had to look Well, it that was up, a good experience then. Almost every time I see a Jeep, there is a duck. <laughs> What's the duck like? <laughs> Su- Susie, ju- Susie just got a uh, duck, like, what, a few weeks ago, and she was like, oh my God, it's so, so, so trafficked. I can't like, Susie, you're fine. It's just, it's a yeah, Jeep I thing. didn't know either at first. <laughs> yeah, where do you put, where do you put the duck? Do you put the duck on anywhere. the hood? Just yeah, anywhere? anywhere on the Jeep. Yeah. <laughs> you just turn on like your car. The rear view mirror is just yeah. the duck. I I remember when I first got my Jeep. It, it was I mean it's probably still a thing now. You you, you kind of wave the jeeps and every time you see someone. Every time it's still a thing now. It's still a thing, and I love it. I Weird. love it. We're okay, like a family. When I first got a Jeep in Florida, <laughs> the amount. Of times I was just looking for other Jeeps just so I could say hi and wave to them because I was so excited about it's, mine. Yeah, it's like a uh, like a brotherhood or like yeah. some sort of. Oh, we're we're a cult. Oh yeah, Jeepers. Yes, it's a Jeepers, state of mind. Jeepers creeps. Yeah, <laughs> it's a Jeep. My cult called the Jeepers creeps. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a wild how like the tire the the tire uh, the the American tire we all use on our car still has to have air in it? Why haven't they figured out how to make a tire? It Where doesn't it rely on air. having air. Just or just it's a full on tire. Like the structure of the tire is the tire. It doesn't need the air. Like just straight rubber. Yes, just straight rubber. Wait, a durable tire. That's a really good point. I think I've he never thought I have the answer. Yeah, if, uh, people people have tried. They they have different like prototypes and stuff of um ones that are basically like an outline of a tire that are like rigid enough to hold the weight but will like comp- yeah. Like oh, like a, almost like a 3D printed tire. Yeah, kinda. there's stuff like that. Um, but also, I think having tires like that are good in case of, you know, someone trying to escape from cops. Like, I feel like tires are always a good way to go oh. when someone is escaping in a car. Right. <laughs> good point. Did you see that pursuit that happened yesterday? No, I missed it. Oh, um, where? It was, uh, I think it was down kind of in Long Beach. Every time there's a pursuit, I'm like, ooh, where in LA is it? And I can never recognize it. Wherever it so is. So what, what happened? What was the uh, story? A guy, I, when I turned it on, it was a U-Haul. And this guy was going so fast. Like, U-Haul? What? A U-Haul. Like a U-Haul. Yeah, I mean, did he like rob a bunch of places and then had everything in his U-Haul? Like, what, what was the... I bet it's pretty easy to get, rob a U-Haul. Oh, I bet, he robbed a U-Haul. I bet he did. Did. Most car rental places, the keys are in it. U-Hauls, <laughs> I feel like... What a terrible vehicle to pick try to outrun the cops yeah in. not not a good pick but again what was he what was the like what did he do i don't know they never really say that during the pursuit like how it all started they just get up there and they just they follow should it. if people are watching it it's like a show kind of catch is, them up yeah it's fun me- to watch them live though like when you catch it live and you can sit there <sighs> kevin the counting and you don't know how long it's gonna go on yeah. for because i thought i was like oh this is gonna go on for five minutes i was watching it for the whole 20 damn minutes we got we got sucked into one that was like an hour and a half and we were like 30 40 minutes and we're like 
I guess we kind of have to see what happens now because we've already invested so much time that you yeah. don't want to be like, well, I just wasted 45. <laughs> this wasn't the one where it was a kid. He was hiding behind a blue car and the cops could not find the parade. Did you see that clip? No. Was that the same chase? Because I, I saw it yesterday. It. So cops are uh, running after this like guy and this guy was hiding behind this car and you because they were filming it from a helicopter and you just see all these cops keep running past <gasps> the guy that they're running after. And he's just in plain sight and the cops just cannot see him. And the, the, there's somebody uh, like the news anchor that was like uh, reporting live from the helicopter. He's like, and they, they just cannot find him. We're trying to alert the police. <laughs> and he's right there. And they keep circling yeah. around him and they're all, and they end up going right in it, like past the car and he's right there. And they're just like, we cannot find and you see it all from like the aerial shot of the helicopter i thought it was the same shot that's why i was like oh i think i saw i wonder if the helicopter guys are in contact with the cops too to, like, oh yeah yeah that's it, it right there this guy is hiding right that's there and they're running so back and forth funny. it's insane oh my imagine your heart rate <laughs> <laughs> that's like ultimate hide and seek yeah right i would there. get a that's lottery like ticket the right final after stage if i was in a a, a cop like chase Go to a mall, park in the parking lot. The camera's gonna follow you, but once you're in the mall, go change some clothes, go buy mm. some new clothes, blend in, go go buy a movie ticket, and go sit in the theater. They will not find you. Has he done fun this to, before? No, yeah. I'm just now thinking of if I was in a pursuit, where would I go? It'd be fun to put us in a situation like this and see what we would actually think of in the moment because it's, it's probably hard <laughs> to think of a mall in the moment. Yeah. The thing but, is, if they've but, got your plate, like, and they see you. You're kind of screwed, mm -hmm. but if you have a stolen car, then you could do it. The world is your oyster. So we run the intro. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, welcome back, Matt. We haven't seen you in a very long I time. No. It's good been way to too have long. you back in this city. Okay. Let's roll <clears throat> the intro. Ready, baby? <clears throat> yep. It's, it's Comet Town, baby. baby. Let's Woo! go. <laughs> Checking your rear view. Welcome back to Zane and Heath Unfiltered. I'm Zane. I'm Heath. I'm Matt. I'm Mariah. And we are absolutely unfiltered. Welcome back to another episode. Um, we are a full team again. We are, yeah. <laughs> no, it's been way too long. We've been trying different methods since the new year. You're experimenting. Just wow. experimenting a little That's bit. That's great. Yeah. You know, why not? This is the year of realizing things. Yeah, of realizing things. Uh, I feel like we've missed so much. Since and we've been recording every much. week, but we haven't like talked about anything that has been going on. Like just yeah, we kind of just been venting into the mic. Yeah, which has been nice, but we've missed it. Like Saltburn happened a month ago. What'd you think? Haven't seen it. You haven't I, seen it. I, you I, saw. I it. loved it. I honestly oh. don't know what it's about. Kind of go in blind. I think that's kind of yeah. The best way to do it. Lately, I've been anti movie trailers unless I'm in a movie theater. I've been, since you've told me, I don't watch trailers anymore. I just go right into the movie. Mm -hmm. I, it's the best way to watch a movie because, like, you, you start it, you're like, I have no idea what I'm about to watch, and it just makes yeah, Because like they that. spoil, they give away the whole freaking They too give much. away way too much. Like, that, there's this new Austin Butler movie where he's like the uh, fighter pilot in World War II, and then that Barry kid from Saltburn, I think, is in it. You just he crashes his plane in the trailer. I'm like, well, now I know that he crashes his plane when I watch the movie. Yeah, giving away too much. And but I but I'm seeing that new movies are uh, are they're making the trailers not give you too much. That's good. Like, did you notice that? No, I just in general, have you noticed that? It's like more even of an in, atmosphere. Yeah, even in uh, Saltburn, like you could watch the trailer, you have no idea what anything is about. That's good. It's so much better that tra I think trailers now have gotten to a place where they it's the trailer itself. It's almost like a mini movie because back in the day it was like in a world or next with this person and that person. And you're going to have a great time. That's it's crazy. Gone. It's crazy. Those trailers weren't that long ago. Uh -huh. Like just go look up at like a 2006 movie and look at the trailer. It's set up just like that. It's like, that's crazy that it's not even that long ago yeah. that they had horrible trailers like that. I wonder what in a world. That. Yeah. It was just like, let's just let it speak for itself. Exactly. You know? Yeah. But yeah, that happened. So it's, Gypsy, just, it's just old now. It's Gypsy just old. Uh, is out of jail. Gypsy is out of jail. Gypsy Rose. I'm glad that we waited a little bit to talk about her actually, because we just, we got to kind of watch the whole thing unfold, right? People excited for her to get out of prison. She's out of prison. 
She's doing all these interviews. She's on TikTok now. She it, she she did it. She's done a lot in the past like two weeks. She is on a damn press tour. Press like, tour. Busy body. Fresh out the bars. And like I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really know much. I knew a little bit. I knew the show was out, but like I didn't know much about really the details of the story. Um, once I started seeing everybody excited about her, that she was about to get released, it was like maybe three days before her release. <laughs> yeah. People are posting those like meme videos. By the way, like, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know that it was like a real thing. I thought it was like one of those just meme jokes that were, that people were just like when Gypsy gets out of jail and everyone's just excited. I thought it was just like a joke, but I was like, but then finding out that on the news that she was actually being released out of prison, I was like, 10 oh, years. I kind of want to, I kind of want to catch up with like catch up with the story and just see like what it's about. So just so when she's out, I can like be caught up, watch the show, watch a little of the doc. Insane, insane ride. This girl like, has been are you on. familiar with the story. I know a little bit, but not too much. Basically this all happened. Like I know she was kind of like uh tortured. And she had a mom who had Munchausen by proxy, yeah. which is, you know, that mental disorder where mothers are so overly protective of their kids. They think that they're suffering like multiple yeah. diseases and stuff. They think they have the illest child and right, right, they just right. suffocate them. But I don't know much about like the aftermath of that. I know she was in jail. I know she had like a boyfriend go kill the her mother. mom. Yes. Um, but that's pretty much the extent. She's our age. I'm pretty sure. So I think she's 32. Yeah. But the way she was treated, she was always treated like a little girl and she, right. uh, her mom lied to her about her age and all. So it, her, she was just always young. She mm -hmm. always acted she was like in a wheelchair around public. She would yeah. just force her to be just this. It's just wonderful that miracles can happen, not just in fairy tales. They would be getting benefits because of she was sick and her. Oh, government. Benefits she said she remembers for... growing up and her mom telling different people different ages that she was. Yeah, Like she kept changing her age and backing it up. So she didn't really know how old she was. Forced her in a wheelchair whenever she did something bad. She would like right, tie right. her up to the bed and then made her stay there for days. And it was pretty much, it was pretty much like, <clears throat> there's different, there's different, I feel like types of, kidnapping not yeah. kidnapping like child abuse yeah. Ch yeah sorry different forms of child abuse this was just one that is just i feel like just so rare where <sighs> like it's a and how it's so front facing like yeah look, my daughter's sick exactly Give and you know the stuff. daughter doesn't know anything she's just she just believes everything her mom is yeah, telling her but she confused. just wasn't actually sick crazy story it's where insane. she was involved in a murder and she recognizes murder is wrong and all of that but like I just want to meet Taylor Swift. <laughs> but like, if you were Taylor Swift, I'd be like, okay, I gotta go. Because but the thing is like, yes, we should praise Gypsy. She's out, she's doing it. But at the same time, it's like, yo, just take a bit and like, I take a moment and heal. I can't imagine being behind bars for 10 years. Yeah. And then suddenly you're going on a damn press tour. People are putting microphones. You're sitting down on podcasts. Google I wonder it. if she knew it was going to be this insane as soon as she got out. She probably was told. Yeah. Uh, she was probably told like a, a, a few weeks before her release because, you know, I'm sure her team or her family saw TikToks and shit. So I'm sure they're like relaying that information. But this wasn't. Here it comes. This wasn't that girl. popular like before the whole TikTok storm, I think, because the show came out. People knew about it, but it got really heavily hyped. The did, weeks before she did got out. Did you guys out. know yes. about it like years and years ago? Before? Yeah, I knew about it for a very long time. I knew of the story, time. but like no more than just, oh yeah, I know about that. To me, it was equivalent to um, like a John Benet Ramsey case. Yeah. Like oh, okay. people are following it and It was like big on the it. news when it's it was a good happening. story. Yeah, it's yeah. a great story. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. It's, um, it reminds me of another case that's getting figured out, the Natalia one. <gasps> Natalia Grace. She's innocent. I can't believe it. And we first brought this up on this podcast, I think years ago when the story first came out, that there was a couple who had adopted a daughter, I believe from Russia. If it's not Russia, forgive oh, me. The Eastern orphan Europe, one. The orphan yes, yes, one. Yes. And the couple suspected that they had been lied to and that this little nine-year-old girl that they had adopted wasn't nine years old, but actually 22 years old. Right. And they said that she was she was a menace. She was threatening to kill everyone in the house. They even bought her because they felt that they had been so wronged by the adoption agency to purchase like her own apartment and then ditched her there. And they, and now she has a new adopted father they do a DNA test finally to realize her true biological age at the time when they were suspecting she was in her 20s. 
She was just not, she, she found out she's 23, meaning when she was younger, she was still just a child. So it was the, the adoption parents that just didn't want her anymore. So they made up this lie saying that she was really older than she was Yeah. to get yeah. her out of the house. That's insane. It's really sad. And in, in the HBO or the, the Max documentary, she sits down with the adopted father, or the one who kicked her out. No way. And this guy acts like, a like a middle school or high school drama teacher. Like this guy is off his fucking rocker where she's like, so why'd you do this to me or whatever? He's like, you know, I am a victim as well. And I know you are. He, he's, for what? he's neurotic because I think he kind of blames the wife at the time that she was convincing him. I didn't watch the whole thing. I should be more reason. Uh, well, uh, so what, what was, what did she, it was just, it was just them two, like. No, I'm uh, saying, like, what, what, what does she is? Does she just have dwarfism? Yes, like, she has dwarfism. That's and that's all she had. That's why they were so. Uh, they couldn't pin her age exactly. And I, when that's I say horrible. she was nine years old, hopefully I'm getting it right. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're making another orphan movie. Um, this is pro which they probably shouldn't do now. <laughs> they're making like an like they're making another sequel. Like, uh, an, I, yeah, I, I heard somewhere that they're making like Orphan Four or something, but. This All has right. nothing to do with with the true story now, wow. but I think they, I think it's time. Yes, to and put an it, end to the they franchise. Also think some people were commenting that the couple like stole the idea of the orphan for like their case. Like they wanted it to be like. Oh wait, no! I thought this movie was like, made because of that case. No, the movie The Orphan. Yeah. Oh no, the movie The Orphan with no, Isabel Orphan, F Orphan. With, yeah, with the Isabel Furman. Oh, yeah, that's that what first I was one under the impression like of. Two, I thought it was like two thousand and like nine. I thought the oh. movie was based off this person. I thought I thought that was a whole no. thing we were talking about. Oh no, no, it's just a lot of people are commenting. This just feels like so much like the movie The Orphan. So this came out after the movie came out. Yes. yes. Oh, so they definitely got yeah <laughs> got the idea. From. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting how we live in this day and age where when someone like Anna Delvey, it's kind of this similar situation where She's like interesting. she committed some crime. She conned people out of tons of money. Yeah. Goes, serves her time, comes out. She's a socialite. Yeah. Superstar. Where now it's going to make me interesting. Obviously, Gypsy's situation is very, very different. But people turn like them from being the criminal like in the public's eyes that you guys like me now. Like George Santos, yeah. the politician who conned everybody, lied about his whole background. Oh, is he the one that's like doing podcasts and, and like doing on cameo different... and stuff? Oh, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our sponsor of this podcast, Dipsy. Now check me out, Heath. Mm -hmm. Winners here, right? Oh yeah. So what better way to warm up those chilly nights than with Dipsy? Ooh. Picture this: a cozy blanket, mm -hmm. a crackling fireplace. Mm -hmm. And you listening to a sexy fantasy audiobook. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. Discover stories about second chance romances, adventurous vacation flings, and hot and heavy hookups. And there's a growing library of fantasy series with vampires, Greek gods, and fairy smut to explore the bounds of your pleasure. New content is released every week. So in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. They also have soothing sleep stories, wellness sessions, and sexy written stories to read. Let Dipsy be your go-to place to spice up your me time. Explore your fantasies, relax and unwind, or even heat things up with a partner. So if you're ready to try Dipsy out, all you got to do is go to dipsystories.com slash unfiltered. That's right. For the listeners of this show today, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash unfiltered. That's right, baby. You're going to get 30 days of full access for free. Full. When you go to dipsy, D-I-P-S-E-A, stories.com slash unfiltered. Thank you, Dipsy, for sponsoring today's episode. We love you. God, we love you. <laughs> hate to bring up the top. Every episode, every episode, we're talking about planes. We're talking about flights. I it's love it. It's a motif. It, it is. Y'all saw the plane. <laughs> the, the plane in the... Yes, from Portland? Yeah. Yeah. 
with the door that ripped completely off. Oh, mid flight. It or wasn't. Like right it wasn't it was even. It wasn't. Off. It was a door that was replaced. Like it was. Like it used to be panel. an exit door, yeah. and they just replaced it with a panel. I just don't understand how it flies off halfway through a flight, and everybody was so calm. I don't understand. I would be screaming didn't on the rip, plane so the kid sitting next to it was wearing a seatbelt, so he didn't get sucked no up. no no, no. Nobody, was nobody was sitting, sitting there next to luckily it. whose shirt got ripped off of them a child shirt i did read in an article a child shirt yeah was. and their parents were holding them the airline must have known that oh there's a possibility there, there's there it couldn't have been luck you think my first question when these things happen i'm like where's the door <laughs> yeah where did it land because it was a it was an old emergency door that they had turned into just a normal i window. understand that it's it's somewhere it i, I did <laughs> imagine a door they, flying from the sky it did it did come down and so did a cell phone that was opened up on um an email apparently from that flight that they could track it back to somebody. Oh yeah, on the and plane. it still worked. The phone yeah. was intact. Oh, can you imagine if the video though Nokia. was like if she was just recording like la la. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, they found the they found the door. Good. Was it just in the middle of nowhere in the it water? Was, I think it was in some guy's backyard. No way. Bob Sauer found the door plug from Alaska Airlines plane speaks about discovery. All right, Bob, shout out to Bob. He's like, I hadn't realized. Uh, <laughs> what does it say that top quote at the, that the debris? Was All of Portland was looking for it. <laughs> oh, that's a dream. I hope they let him keep it. Yeah. Dude, that thing coming down like that. <laughs> I'm surprised it wasn't. <laughs> Slice like, the house in half. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, but 737 MAX 9. I saw a TikTok of a girl who's like, there's a reason why I do not fly these planes. Next time when you're booking your flight, click this link. Make sure it's not a 7. And she, and she was making all these TikToks before this incident. Like, I really? will not get on a Boeing third, a, a 737 because they are not, like, <laughs> fully up to date. I just don't understand how everybody was so calm on the plane. I guess in that moment, though, that's when the gas, the, the oxygen masks come out. You're face to face with death. All you can do there is pray. Like I don't know. I'm look. I'm not the one to sue, right? I don't. I think like suing people. It's it, unless it's like something you, you were you were really wronged. This situation. I don't care how good I was. I don't care how far away from that door I was. Mm -hmm. I would sue the shit out of United Airlines if I was on that flight. I don't care where I was on that plane. Yeah, I'm walking out of the plane with money. You're and not because. I'm traumatized. I'm completely, I would never get over that and I would never get on a plane again. How are people because not of that. deaf? I feel like that would just bust my eardrums completely. Yeah, the video the didn't sound loud from the wind coming through it. Sometimes iPhones are weird when it tells like it's like so much noise. They'll like, like well, they, when you're jumping out of one of those planes, if you're skydiving, how loud is that? Do you have headphones or anything? Yeah. Because like there's just like, a big <sighs> open door. Like the engines. Like huh. soaring at that speed because you're going about how many hundreds of miles an hour Ma or maybe the wind is just passing by it just perfectly where it's not i guess so mm -hmm. but thank goodness thank the lord I, nobody died i would be i'd be right. I, I could smoke now oh yeah right <laughs> the window's open <laughs> yeah don't tell me what my, my vape would be coming right out you have the oxygen mask you're like sir <laughs> you're like sir you can't smell i'm like really oh i can't smoke on the plane <laughs> You about can do anything on this flight right now, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> Panel's missing. <laughs> Imagine her coming with a mask, sir. <laughs> can you put your tray table up, sir? It was so wild. Bro, I'd be is so that upset. This flight was out of Portland, which was the Patricia and I, we were in Portland. We took the train back. If this happened less than 12 hours of us. Where was this flight going? Portland to chatsworth california or some some random california city it was a short flight this is a little blessing in disguise though because i feel like everyone's gonna have their seatbelt on now yeah because there's a lot of people oh, that are guilty yeah. of keeping it off but i, I feel like people, i feel, feel like nobody's no, gonna I, get up I, I, I don't know why I, even when i'm sleeping i like i always I, have it on always have it on Alas. i don't think about that that situation like that situation is cr like now i will always wear my seatbelt it's weird i'll put it on <clears throat> in a plane but not in like a bus. They didn't even have seatbelts on our school bus. Were you on our bus when we crashed that? I mean, the bus barely moves. I mean, you're, you, you, you were in a bus crash. Yeah. That bus went right over the, uh, yeah, I told you this. I talked about this on the podcast. I don't remember. Wait, really? Maybe years ago. <laughs> I, we were, yeah, we were on a school bus and, um, she, 
she was making a left turn and the car was coming. It was her fault, the our bus driver's fault. She ran right over this little red car. <laughs> and we look, we're like, oh, they're dead. All of a sudden, eight people come out of that car. Burp, 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 burp. All eight people and one person already had a sling. Uh, oh, <laughs> sling. And we're like, oh shit, this is bad. But it, the we didn't even know we were in a car crash. We That's, stopped. We're like, what happened? The car was completely under the bus. That bus, you you don't feel anything on that bus damn. when you're in a crash. I don't get how bus drivers don't get in accidents all the time. Like the way people are just able to maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> this big, ass, like you're telling me, get a steering wheel like this, and I gotta rotate. <laughs> This vehicle just right in downtown traffic. Even the buses that have like the the little the um, you know what you know when the buses are really long, they have to separate it with yeah, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> with yeah. the what do you call those uh, the it's got like a joint. accordion like it's, it's like an accordion thing. yeah those buses those buses how I would I would just be stressed yeah all day driving that that's why like even if the bus drivers mean I'm like I don't blame you 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 do your thing. <laughs> What you are doing, I respect. That's why they're always in a bad mood, and I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, that is a very stressful job. Of course. Shout out to bus drivers. Miss Juicy, she should have told us some more bus drivers. <laughs> would you would you make them charge would you charge them when they, uh you know how they have like the box where they like put in their coins or mm -hmm. like tickets? Would you just let them go? If I was a bus driver, I, I would just let them ride for free. I have had situations like that where I've been on a bus and I'm like, wait, I didn't know. That I had to, and they're like, fine. It depends where you're going. In New York City, they wouldn't tolerate They're cheap, it. right? Bus rides? Now they just do Apple Pay. You just go up and go boop, boop. I know, but how cheap are like bus a, rides like now? Like 10 bus? cents? Is it still like 10 cents, 20 cents? No. no like a buck 50. Yeah, buck 25, yeah. probably. But the inflammation of the, her times. <laughs> Bring back the trolleys. <laughs> I love myself a trolley ride. Mm. <laughs> Get me on a trolley. Uh, I'm I'm at ease. Cards. You get there in three times the amount of time. But. <laughs> you're on a wooden ass seat, <laughs> but you look good. Feel like it's the 1940s out here. Good day, everybody. The entire side is open. You're just like sitting. They should they should have you know uh, like uh, like the carts where you feed people on flights. Mm -hmm. the, oh, a trolley on a, a trolley. Tro they should have a trolley on like a city bus. <laughs> yeah, you think so? Yeah, it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> But are trolleys, <laughs> trolleys are usually like in hilly cities. Well, like San Francisco, oh, that's a tram. I don't know. But then I feel like you're in Florida, you just see trolleys <laughs> with, like, it's just a car. Oh, you just go to Nashville. They have those all around. Oh, dude, that, that tornado in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, yeah, dude, Heath sent me that. I th Bro. There's never been a tornado in, uh, not in Florida, sorry, but in Fort Lauderdale. There's never been anything like that in Fort Lauderdale, right? I've never heard been of there. a tornado, but just the way it was ripping through the city, it was terrifying oh yeah it was like blowing up the the power the, the surges. transformers that yes. are blowing because as it's going not built for tornadoes like that that's for sure it's weird when you see a tornado in the middle of like yeah. a, a dense urban area of like that it just doesn't make sense and that was right after that was like what two days after the cops situation yeah all those cops you saw that right we talked about this last episode but like all the cops that were in uh, the miami alien, the giant aliens in Miami. yes I, but like I but, did the, but there was just like Way too, it was just like 150 cop cars and the president was not there. Why is there 150 cop cars just circling around that and area? What did, was it because also some kids were lighting off fireworks and That's people thought they, it was an accident? It doesn't it was, matter. Uh, they said kids it was lighting kids off fireworks, fireworks, 150 cops? But there was an alien. They all have body cams. Show us the footage. Not e and even, a, even a shooter there doesn't bring 150 cop mm. cars I'm sorry, to if Miami. I, if I was a police officer and I... In all respect to officers, and you're out there fighting for your life, and you have you got an SD card full of a a ten foot alien. <laughs> See a force. I'm taking this to TMZ. Like Matt, uh, would, Matt, would, have been, Matt would have been up there like this, <laughs> yeah. trying to record everything, just like getting his angle. Ten foot alien. It is ridiculous. I'm sick of the horseshit, though. I just want to see it already. I I'm like show over me the, show I'm me over an these, alien like, or not. Pixelated videos. I'm just over it. I want someone to be like, guys, introducing the ale and just lift off the curtain and have the whole world see it. Yeah. Trust me, we're not going to be that shocked by it. We're going to be like, finally, oh, whoa, that's a, okay, send them off now. Yeah. <laughs> so it, wouldn't it, be, it, it, be, it would be crazy if like we find out aliens truly are real. There's like the most hard concrete proof and how interesting the world would be like, 
seven days go by, right? All right, what are we doing? <laughs> like, people would just be like moved on. Like our attention spans would be so short. Yeah, I'm actually very curious what would happen if they did come out with something like that. Would would it cause like mass hysteria, or would I people just be like, "All right"? I, I don't think it would. I, we, don't, I, don't, I truly I don't think, don't it, would think it would. It depends if like the aliens were like talking. If they were like in arrival, like how those big bean like things just came and sat for a long time, or it'd be like District Nine where it was just they couldn't get home yeah. and it turns into a slum and. We like hate the aliens. Yeah. It all depends on what they bring to us. Mm. But there's a there's this movie called Another Earth <laughs> about like <laughs> it's the premise of the movie is that one day the Earth just replicated in the cosmos and you walk outside and you look up and there's Earth. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a whole nother version of you yeah. out there. There's a whole nother version of us doing this podcast. Yeah. And we're like, shit. So like we could interview the other unfiltered crew in this separation of the cosmos. How insane would that fucking be? Oh. Like, we'd be like, I'm gonna, oh, like, <laughs> well, oh, I would hate myself. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I don't want to meet. I don't want to meet them. You get competitive <laughs> with the other one. The other one continues his Zila transformation. You're, <laughs> you're back here going that little Sur bitch. He's serrated. He's like, what is like a year ahead of me? <laughs> Yo, see, that would like ruin the world. I want to know, the whole movie's based on this like girl who got in a car accident and she just hopes her other self is not the one who was killed somebody. Okay. Oh, okay. So like, but that's what the whole movie is. But I'm like, how would be the rest of the world truly be if there was an exact mm. replica of you? Would there be wars? Would there be peace? Um, I think me and my double can uh, can do a lot of things. <laughs> and he's yeah. like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're trying to scam me. I see how it is. You're both trying to get the other person to do what you don't want. And We're both trying to just manipulate each other. <laughs> you know when you're like booking a flight and it says like emissions, negative 35. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's like plus five. It's like, wait, bitch, wait, where are you seeing I, this? When you're booking your flight on Google Flights, like you just go to Google Flights, you know, before you really go in to book the flight, but you yeah. just want to see what's possible. And it will list out the airlines, and then there's like this emissions like bit where I'm like, I don't give a shit. I don't even what what are uh, what is emissions like your carbon footprint? Like that it tells you which like flight, how much your like which flights could release the worst amount of air on like a negative. Scale. Are they doing that just to like appease the? Yeah, but just, who's genuinely? I'm all for people being like green and saving the environment, but like if someone if you're on Google uh, flights and you're like, oh. This one, if oh, it, I could get home faster, but this one If you one got is, one that's $100 that gives off plus five or the other one is 600 and your negative emission, not one person is going to pay the, the more expensive flight. I truly want to, I, I would like to meet the person that's actually looking at only emissions when he books flights. Why do they even put it up there? I didn't ask it's for a to chemical get you compound. To, to want to, to, it gets people excited. Makes you feel better, right? You, when when you buy a package, uh, you buy chocolates and it, or some or anything. It says like, what's weird is uh, it's, orga it's or organically made or something, but it's like truly not organically made. They could just put that on there. I, it's probably the same thing where it just makes somebody feel better when they but see the that. But the plane is still gonna go and carry the people. The plane is still gonna fall apart middle in the mi <laughs> middle of the fucking sky. But I get like if you're running a car, you're like, you know what? No, I'll take the EV. I'm I'm I want it to be a little bit more environmentally conscious because you're driving it. It's your car. The plane will still take off without you and we'll still book those people without you. Why do you tell us the emissions? I mean, you can say that about anything though, right? I just think it's strange, the plane thing. The cow is still gonna get butchered with or without you eating a burger. Correct. Before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our next sponsor of this podcast, SeatGeek. You guys know that there's a ton of concerts, festivals, games, all that happening right now, and you can get the best deal possible only on SeatGeek. That's right, baby. And with over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app out there. Again, like I said, they have more than 70,000 concerts, festivals, games, all happening right now. 
And they got artists like Drake, the Jonas Brothers, Post Malone, the 1975. They're all on tour right now, and you don't want to miss out. That's right, and SeatGeek makes it so easy. They're going to put all the tickets across the web in one place to make sure that you're getting a good deal. And each ticket is rated on a scale from 1 to 10, so look for the green dots. Green means it's a good deal, and red is mm, a little bit pricey. That's right, and every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee, and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. And you know we got you guys covered. All you have to do is use code UNFILTERED, and you're going to get 20 $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. Woo, baby. Again, that's $20 off your first purchase with promo code UNFILTERED. Make sure to click the link in our description to download the app today. Thank you, SeatGeek, for sponsoring this podcast, helping everybody out, save some money, and get them to the shows that everybody's been dying to get to. Baby, let's go. Let's have some fun. Get your tickets, baby. It's 2024. New year, new show. Let's go. Did you guys see on Netflix, uh, they made a show on Netflix uh, called You Are What You Eat. And yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, they did a study on twins where they would one um, was uh vegan and the well, other they had one do a vegan diet and one do a like an omnivore diet both healthy both healthy diets and because twins have a similar you know similar dna and similar you know they they did a whole series on it which was so interesting but they realized that the vegan diet was a little oh but did you Oh. Did you look at who funded the project? In it, yes. No. <laughs> yeah. Wait, no. Who funded the I project? I didn't want to burst your bubble. Who the whole thing the- is funded by like a vegan, <laughs> a pro-vegan. Uh. I, I just don't trust anything anymore. Um, also, sorry guys, if I'm a little low energy, I'm still coming off the sickness. And I also had an appointment this morning that kind of like ruined my day. Oh no. Um, what did, what happened? Just like, I've had like a couple panic attacks today and it's been a little. One. I had. Are uh, you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. Uh, it's I just totally like, fine it's just like in the back of, of my head this entire time as we're recording and I can't stop thinking about it. I had a uh, checkup on my eye for, like after my um, LASIK. Yeah. And there's like a growth inside of my cornea of like cells that's like expanding and it's like starting to mess with my vision. Um, So they have to go in and do like surgery and like cut it open and like scrape out these like cells that are like growing in my oh cornea. my goodness it, and it came from the the lasik yeah it's cells that will just get in and underneath so it's underneath like the flap of where they went under yeah and it starts spreading so i guess it's spreading what, what is it what, what is kind it, of cells what is it are called? they what is it called epithelial oh epithelial growth. cells okay because like it's like blurred and i have like the lights that I see have like a smear, if that makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, like there's like halos when you look at yes. like a light. My halos are like smeared. Strange. You had PKR, right? No, I did smile. Oh. Smile though, it wasn't your incision though. Yours was very small. small. Yeah. And then that's how they went. So it was in. a small incision. Then they went under and started scraping around in there and then pulled it out of that. But I think that little incision... It can happen where, like, I guess cells from the outside can get underneath. And if it's underneath, they'll start multiplying and expanding and growing like a... Oh, my goodness. almost. Is the, um, is the eye doctor that you're going to the same kind of eye doctor that, like, LASIK, like LASIK centers would have? Or is this only eye doctors yeah, that... Yeah, no, look- he's, he's going to do it. But they have to do, like, the whole peel it back, and then they're going to scrape... All that right. stuff, and then are they optimistic about it? Uh, this yes, but I like looked it up, and apparently it's like a forty percent chance of coming back again. Ooh. So it's like I don't want to keep doing this shit, and I've right. been having like panic attacks all day because buddy, of it. I'm sorry. Um, I really didn't want to do this again because it was like yeah, I wanted it to be done. You you so, you, you just didn't want to yeah. get into your eye after that one LASIK. You're talking about the one LASIK. So yeah, you well, because I didn't want to do the hole where they pull the flap back. I didn't want that procedure, which is why I did the small incision. But in order to fix it, they have to pull the thing back. So they're going to have to go in and do that. Was when you got your LASIK <coughs> surgery that time, did, what, did, was it just like a really bad experience? You really didn't like them on your eye at I all? Hate, I hated everything about well, it. Well, yours was you know, very intense. You did the full flap where they opened your flap. Yes, I did open. the I did bladed like tradition. And, and why do they have two different procedures? Is it just pretty much like... Uh, preference or I know that for PKR or the other one was for athletes or like fighters yeah. or people who are like a uh, football players people in heavy combat where they felt like things are going to be in their face they get that one because I think it has like a little bit more 
durability, but it's a lot more expensive. Got it. So okay. as opposed to like skinning the entire thing off and then putting it back on, you can either make a small incision. So if you get hit with like in your eye or rub it, you could slide that little flap. Oh, and so it can it could be like moved and like get messed up. So you're, you're the one you did is pr more pr like more secure, like more. Protective. Yeah. Okay. I feel yeah. so f fucking bad because I was like Heath, you're gonna get it. My mom, my mom got it. She wish she got it sooner. I know. <laughs> I looked it up. It was like point zero two percent chance that this could happen with the smile thing, and like, of course, the guy was looking at it, and every <laughs> he kept looking at my eye with like the light and going back, and he was just like, interesting. They could see the epithelial cells in it. Yeah. Wow. I took a picture on uh, Mariah took it on uh, my phone, just like in the car. And I, you can clearly see it. Oh, in, like in your eye right now. Yeah. That whole big spot. Oh, is the growth. Oh, oh my goodness. But it's, it's like getting into the, um, the, yeah, I see the it. pupil portion. Yeah. So it's like, I can s like my vision is like blurred. Right optimistic side about now that the, now that the one thing that you were scared of, of that being open though your eye though is um, and i'm saying this optimistically yeah your eye is the fastest healing like organ in your body so like hopefully the way i'm looking at it and i know that you say there's a 40 percent chance of it coming back but hey you had the bad gamble with the 0.2 percent i don't yeah i want to be optimistic and manifest that They'll clear it out. Your eye, that whole thing will heal and you'll You be haven't fine. had any issues with your LASIK? No. And most people don't. That's why yeah, it's like no. sucks. Sometimes it's hap it happened to you. Dryness, but very like maybe my eyes look a little bit more red in the morning, but mm -hmm. no. I wonder if my mom, I should ask my mom. I don't think we've talked about it since she's here because she got it at, like, yeah. at a late age, which is kind of. There's more. It could be more complications or more problems if you late if you wait to do it. And you're older. I have to do it on the 23rd. Ask for a ton of Valium. Y'all owe me on this one. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I was just explaining. No, no little, that's scary. And I, I, no, you, you waited to tell us on the podcast. Fuck, that's. It was the first time you've heard about it? Yeah, yeah I just oh, heard shit. it. I just had the appointment. I'm so sorry, like, man. When, do, when will they uh, proceed with the procedure? On the 23rd. On the 23rd. Sorry, yeah. I missed that. Two weeks. Well, we'll keep an eye out. Um. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I bet you there's at least Online. two people listening yeah. to this that are about to do it or have done it before. Yeah. Or Probably. whose dad's an ophthalmologist. Little... Let's have him on. Yeah. I just don't want to have to do it again and again. Anything on the eye. It's like, like I hate anything on my teeth. Mm -hmm. On your I teeth? I know what you mean. Like, it, it, like I, I hate, I like, any, like teeth, teeth stuff. Like teeth scraping? Like dentist? I'm, I'm at the dentist all the time, but like it's a nightmare every time I'm at the, I hate, I hate people like in my mouth like yeah. touching my teeth i know every time i'm there at the fucking dentist i'm just like surely not everyone else is feeling the way i'm feeling or like i have to like get myself to this point of just accepting the suffering but i like, i just don't i don't i don't have good teeth at all so it's like I, i'm i'm walking into a battlefield like i know it's that i have i don't mind it at all Oh, uh, a dentist? I kind of like Well, it. it's probably you have good teeth, right? Even still, like I've had cavities that have been like filled and fixed. And you, you don't mind the... Oh, and on you your, feel I, it I like love, in your head. No, like just to clean. I love cleanings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, like, I like when they cover your eye with like that like wet blanket and they spray salt water into your mouth. What? Yeah. And Wait, what bougie like, ass shit you're going to? I don't get any of that. That's all they, over. You, they, you get like a massage. <laughs> <laughs> where the hell are you going? You never had like the salt water spray where it like it's like a like a bead yeah. sand blaster. I or mean, the, I, I have that, but it, it's not salt water. It's like regular. I'm water. always like, where the hell is this going? <laughs> like <laughs> they got those tubes, everywhere. and it's like you're telling me there is just this tub that someone has to throw and away. then there's like that magic dispenser with the blue liquid oh and you like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i love that and you get a sticker when you leave cleanings are interesting to me because i feel like cleanings they're they only make your teeth that clean only for that day by the next day your teeth are right back to where it started but it, it, it's like, like it's get like it. getting the plaque off yeah. like in your and then you could feel but we don't space. get that plaque off though when we brush our teeth and floss. Do you have good gums or do you have- like, Hell this, no, my, you, my you gums suck. You want to see, see something crazy? <laughs> you want to see my gums? He looks like look at this right So I I need a root canal right here. Look at the, look at this. You see that? 
Zane. Let me see. Zane. Oh my. Let me see. That is crazy. Oh, oh boy. Mariah, I think that's that. a. Uh, so right there, that was a bat. So my a dentist maybe like six years ago did a root canal on it, and he didn't fully um, mm. get the. Um, what is it? The plaque or the? You have to. You have to fully the clear out the nerve. Yeah. You fully take out the nerve, and then you fill it. He didn't fully take out the nerve. <gasps> There's a little bit of nerve in there, and that's not good. Right over over years, it just starts to. Infect is that an infection in there? So that's like full yes. of oh yeah. From he Heath, from here to here, it feels like a giant bruise. Like when I touch here, it hurts, hurts, hurts. Oh hurts, no. Hurts. It's wow. really bad. I just did I I've had so much to do in the last few weeks. I was like, I'll wait. But I I'm I'm gonna do it. Wow. All over again. Paying double, right? It's it, it, you don't you don't get you don't get a free root canal because a dentist fucked up on your teeth. You gotta pay again. For that fuck What? Up. Yes. Because I'm not going to the same dentist. I don't know who, which dentist did that mistake. Wow. So you gotta you 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 have to pay for Ugh, it. Ugh, it's crazy. Bro, root canals are not cheap. Mm -hmm. So expensive to get a root canal. And they so also because it's, it's 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 it's, it's uh, technically a surgery. Is it because they're opening your mm -hmm. there's a, there's been like some like a lot of talks thinking that root canals could actually be like the cause of cancer. Awesome. I've like had they've realized like people who've suffered from certain what sorry, what, Bitch, sorry. We, we got eye cancer y'all in my prayers <laughs> i'll be praying for both of you whatever at least we don't have psoriasis so hey i'm in the clear we all got something and mariah what do you have any ailments crippling anxiety whatever's going on upstairs <laughs> i feel like i'm kind of well i have this like weird i have something i've noticed in my body but it's, it's not a competition matt I know this is like I'm. I'm not trying to sound like I'm one upping you guys, but it's a good thing. Since having my appendix removed, I've realized I haven't had any stomach pain. Like you know, if you're like trapped gas, or you're like, Ooh, yeah, Ooh. yeah. I haven't had any of that since my appendix. Well, was do, doesn't your appendix hold a lot of like that uh, vile, vile and shit? Vile, yeah, I guess. Then so maybe, maybe that's it. But it's then I'm like, well, then that whole time I was having random pains wasn't my appendix. I just. I don't have those pains anymore, which is weird because usually I'm maybe maybe Googling you like started it. fresh. Like once you got it removed, it's like a, like a clean slate. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of freaky. I was just like, I haven't been in pain. <laughs> what? Yeah, Mariah Mar Mar highlighted exploding toilet leaves customers stinky and injured. What? <laughs> I thought it was a good segue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you had Duncan up the whole time, and I was gonna say that I just found out yes or two days ago. My brother worked at Duncan for like two years. I had no idea. While the, we were the Duncan going? you guys used to go to? Um, no, I don't know which Duncan, but he worked at a Duncan for a while. Wow. And I, and Where'd I you think that. he went for those two years? What I thought mean? he was going to a friend's house. You were working at Duncan and you couldn't bring me back. I, I just don't remember ever him bringing Some donuts. home donuts. Like I never saw Duncan at the house. Yeah, you hmm. think you would. I feel like that's yeah. like... I had a college roommate who worked at Kane's Chicken Fingers, and it was the best because he would come home after his shift of all, with all the chicken fingers that they didn't like sell and whatever. And that is so that's dangerous. dangerous. Oh, dude! And we had Kane's sauce. We'd get it like oh. by the fucking jug. Wait, how how long ago was this? Two thousand and fourteen. Wait, Raising Kane's has been out that long. Raising Kane's has been out since I was like in high school. Oh, like, I thought it was like a new. It's Texas based, but yeah. it started out it's there. It's new out here. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. It, it, did it like get better? I when I go to Canes now, it's really out good here that now. it's become so big. It still slaps every time, but sometimes I'm like, I go. It, it used, used to, be. to be kind of like a Chick Fil A. Sometimes when you go into a Canes, you kind of catch it. And you're like, this feels like a little bit of mayhem's gone through. Like the I, you go to the ice machine and it's like already empty and there's a huge mountain of it because people don't know how to use it. There's, uh, so they're like kind of dirty. But. I, I feel like it's how Dave's hot chicken's not the same. Do you remember Dave's when it like first location when the tenders were that big they were that long huge you would get two tenders and be like i'm disgustingly i, I full. think that it's still and that it was, big no 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 dude they're dude, like they're, a hockey puck zane they used to be massive it's probably because people weren't eating all of it i feel like also too when you start like expanding like that and you're I, you're buying high quality chicken like good size and then you need to start buying more and more and more to provide for all you the just locations have to get the cheaper you have to go for a farm where you can get that much quantity mm -hmm. yeah, and it's probably, but yeah, that has to be it. They used to be massive. It's pretty crazy. I saw a sunken pirate ship. 
What? I went to Oregon. What do you mean you saw a sunken like? Oh, we I, we, I got you to went see, snorkeling. No, I got to see. It was like a uh, it was a shipwreck. It was a shipwreck. Sorry, not a sunken pirate ship. A shipwreck that happened in like the 1900s. It's called the shipwreck of Peter Iredale, and is it's that it? in it's outside of Astoria. Yeah, but the whole thing is really long. But that's like the front of it. Oh wow! But it's just wild that you're like seeing this. Where'd the rest go? Uh, the rest is like in the sand. They have some pictures that are from like above and you can kind of see the shape of it. I've seen some drones. I'm guessing they footage. just don't touch it just because it's like cool. It's just a landmark. Yeah, it's just cool. It's out like in a state park and like you can. Imagine it's just fake. I thought it was a city and I was like, we need more people to come to the beach. <laughs> I would just get some metal and just make a fake fucking wreck <laughs> just so people can. Guys, yeah, tourism is low. Oh, yeah, that's it from above. So you can see kind of how long oh, it goes yeah, back. Oh, yeah, yeah, But... I don't know. It's just I'm surprised a, it just not just never got cleaned up. Like they kinda, just kept it there. That's kind of like that one thing they left off the coast of uh, where was it, New Jersey, and the the dead bodies on it started to smell, and they were like, "All right, we should probably clean this up." And it was just such a huge thing that it would have been hard to clean, and then also it started attracting people for tourism to try to like they were going there for it. So they're like, "All right, we should wait," and then all the bodies that were on it, I guess, started to smell. So then it was people were like, all right, this is kind of disgusting. But yeah, apparently that whole area is like super haunted. And oh, before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our next sponsor of this podcast, Fume. Guys, cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits today. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor or those fake TikTok doctors that you see every day. That's right, baby. We're talking about Fume and they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Exactly. The Brain Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. So instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors. Honestly, this is the perfect thing for me because, you know, I have a few bad habits mm -hmm. that I do every day. And I honestly just can't wait to try this. That's right, baby. You get it. Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habits super easy. So your Fume comes with an adjustable airflow device and designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. I'm honestly super excited to get ours in. We just ordered them the other night. They're yeah. not here yet. Or they should, they should be here guys. in like a couple days, but I... They I, look so sleek. I just too. need I just need something with like good flavors too because mm -hmm. that's like right right now what I'm Yeah, you just want that flavor, you know? Yeah. Something something good to taste. And what I really like about these is that other vapors, they taste very like like kind of like sticky soda, while these are gonna be like herbal tea. So it's gonna mm. just feel nice light, going down. Refreshing. Yeah, real light, refreshing. Just gonna feel good. And I really like the aesthetic of it. Like the wood, it just looks really nice. Yeah, it looks like... It, it, Quality. It, it, it's given like a number number two pencil. It's giving futuristic 1920s. And when you're on the site, you also got to try the new Solano Fume. It's made with a premium walnut barrel and an onyx coated mouthpiece that has a slightly softer finish. And right now is the best time to start the good habit with Fume because all orders for the month of January are buy one, get one course so you can stock up for that New Year's resolution. And plus, as a listener of the show, you can get an extra... 10% off when you use our code. Head to trifume.com slash unfiltered and use code unfiltered for an additional 10% off plus BOGO course until January 31st to help making starting the good habit that much easier. Again, that's trifumefum.com slash unfiltered and you're going to save 10% off your journey pack today. Thank you, Fume, for sponsoring today's episode. Uh, we can't wait to start our good habits. You guys know that the Breaking Bad House yeah, is like now owned by this like crazy lady. The Karen. And yeah, the Karen. Yeah, and yeah. you know, just people like drive by it she's out there yells at them they go away it's still happening today this lady just lives on that driveway and just sits there and just screams at people all day long she gets her kicks she's yeah no that's a person with a personality disorder how who, can you just sit there and just she likes that's it. your she's, life she's a narcissist she she thrives off that that woman is more of a menace than just people coming up and taking a goddamn picture if i lived next door to the breaking bad house which goddamn can you imagine you bought this house and turns out the house next to you is the yeah. breaking bad house. A, a, a location scout went there and was like Let's do this one, <laughs> not that one. And that guy, that I'll house is probably my, worth sell that it. house. Somebody would buy that house for millions and millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. Do it. That woman should get off her fucking stoop. 
But that she thrives. But then her, but then her life is like her life has no meaning. Then. Yeah, her purpose in life is <laughs> yeah. just being like, can you believe these people? Like, I'm gonna go no, and just like loves the that feeling la- of that lady definitely has no friends. Just build that- your wall higher. Then nobody make it just the most boring thing ever. But there's Move. actually there, there's a I think there's a law where you cannot have like a wall just surrounding your house. Right, uh, like there's like there's yeah, there probably is. Move, but you know what? If that's but, the homeowners association's rule, yeah. then I think they should also switch it up and get that woman out of that house. I think so too. Like I would be, I would be upset if I was in that house next door. I'm proud of it. Like uh, it's so cool that this house wasn't Breaking Bad. I'm in the neighborhood. Cool. I'd be so frustrated if there was just a lady screaming outside of my house mm-hmm. every day because people wanted to take pictures of it. How do you it. buy it after it's popping off? I think she already owned it in the beginning. I don't think she bought it when it was on TV. Are you TV. sure? Yeah, I'm pretty oh, sure. And, 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 she, and she was fine with it being on TV, She huh? was fine with renting it out, making oh, money yeah, off of yeah, it. Yeah, hey, yeah, girls, yeah. did you hear some new show called Breaking <laughs> Babble? I, hopefully, I'm going to be breaking even in my <laughs> bank account. Thanks to all this location <laughs> scout money. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Maybe she didn't get paid a lot. Maybe that's why she's just so angry. But your house is worth so much. We were in Astoria, Oregon. Is it Astoria or Astoria? Never figured it it's out. It's his- Historia. Um, well, what was so historic about oh, it very good. was the Goonies house is there. We got yeah. to see the Goonies house. And what's cool is that a guy recently, um, I think last year, two years ago, I don't know, there was an auction for the house. A guy who's an entrepreneur, I think in Missouri, sorry if I have that wrong, bought it for $1.6 million because he just was a huge Goonies head and always wanted to do it. And mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure the house next door, the one that Data like zips across, is like one of his friends and he bought it too. That's cool. And they preserved it. They now hold like little mini events and parties for people to come and like see and enjoy the That's house. That's how you take advantage of a situation. This lady should be having parties. She should be, yes. her neighbors should hate her for being so proud of her house. You know what I mean? See, see, look how nice it is, Barb. <laughs> you could have, you know, you could have just opened up your heart to all these people. See how many happy people are here today. Imagine she was like such a sweet lady. I feel like she would make so many new friends. Yeah. You know, everybody, like people want to come over for like barbecue Sundays. Mm-hmm. What was cool about the Goonies house when you I'd pull fly in when for you, barbecue Sundays? I, for would one, I would definitely fly in for one Sunday to like, out. Yeah, that'd be such a good story. It's cool when you go up to the Goonies house. Because obviously they get a lot of cars trying to pull up and see the house. Right when you're getting up close, they have this big sign that says, hey, you guys. Sick. Perfect. It's awesome that you're attending the, or seeing this part of the community. Please park on this street right here and walk up. Love and I was it. like, this is great. He has a little donation box. I venmo a couple bucks. There you go. You see Venmo. Oh, my God. Venmo. It's- yeah. That lady would make so much money off Venmo if she just had a barcode up there. Right. Ignore Karen. That's funny. <laughs> Oh, wow. I didn't even see that. That's cool. Were you in Port? You said Portland? Oh, uh, Portland is where we landed. We rented a car and then did the Oregon coast. How is that I city? S- Do you like it? Portland? I We didn't explore Portland like oh, okay. at all. At I've heard all. some story. I've heard like crazy shit. No, it was looking rough out in Portland. I was oh. like, ooh, Portlandia. But I know there are really, <laughs> really cool parts of Portland. But I mean, we then took the train home. So we were down like in the thick of it at Union Station. Did you go to Tillamook? We did go to Tillamook. Went to the Tillamook Creamery. I should have yeah. brought you wait, back. Wait, 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 wait. Is that uh, the the ice, ice cream? Cheese and ice cream. Uh, Is yes. cheese too? Yeah, it was so cool getting to like see them make the cheese. Like I love me some uh, like assembly line. Uh, what do you call it? Like the manufacturing, like a thing. Yeah, like just, it, yeah. The, 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 belt, the, the belt comes down. Yeah. Well, I can watch that all day. And those people out there lit- legit cutting the cheese. Like, <laughs> I love that. Like, even like even Krispy Kreme, it's not like that big of a factory in there, but like it's fun to watch like yeah. the donuts come through and then the icing comes falling down. It, it feels and, like a, uh, like almost like a science project. Yeah. I think more places should do what Krispy Kreme does. I think it's so sick. Yeah. It, like, it makes people want to just like kind of stand there, chill a little bit longer. You know, you know what? You after appreciate the, the art of the food that we're making. After this, I'm gonna go drive by and see if the hot and ready lights on. We Jeez. should do that. The hot and ready oh. light for Little Caesars for Krispy Kreme. <laughs> oh, sh- baby, Little Caesars actually, light always on. It's actually, always hot de- and ready. Baby, you deserve it. You deserve it. I do. I'm. You, do. you I'm, got sales in your eyes. I'm, I'm you in deserve a mood. donut. Mm-hmm. What? Back, at, back at it again at Krispy Kreme. <laughs> Well, other places can like they have a mini factory like that. I think co- they, they they can have a coffee like in coffee shops. Sure. Well, it's got to be something that they can do that stays like a maybe like a like a bagel joint. 
where they're cutting them all, and then it's got like that slow toaster yeah. conveyor belt that rolls. Even like oh, a yeah. fake one. Just do a fake one. Or have you ever or been to like a Mexican mix- restaurant and they got the tortilla machine going and they got the woman there? Like at, at Uncle Julio's, we had it. Yeah. Just a person comes in, they do the tortillas, you, know you watch I it saw? go in. When we were in Tennessee, there was a vending machine for fresh cotton candy, and it was I'd never thought of it. I'd never seen one before, but I was blown away. It is one of those machines. Like, like a, a centrifuge th- kind of thing. That you would see, and it's got the stick, and it starts blowing, and it's wrapping. Did you have one? No, there, there was a kid in front of me doing it. I, I have a kid. tough relationship with I just wanted candy. to watch the system. Uh, but yeah, it was really cool. Cotton candy is great, but then I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Mm. It's just for, you're like, it's just sugar. It's just, I mean, yeah, it's just for kids. It, I, I, adults should not be having cotton candy. It's well, just not an adult thing but to But when eat. you were at a sports game and they came out with the fucking, it looked like they were going into battle for like cotton candy. Like someone has the big stick and you got pink and blue yeah. and you can pick that shit when you're a kid and you're- like, The stick? Like- you know what I'm talking about? Chips, popcorn. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. talking about the ones that came in the bag already yeah. made that was on that cone, and you eat that shit at a sports game. It was like taking whippets. Oh. Like They only do that at baseball games now, right? Baseball games are like definitely by far the best food-wise for any sort of... The only place I would ever have a lemon chill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, just, you know, I, never would I sit yes. there and eat just a... Oh, Yes. They don't got that shit anymore. There's no way. It's one of those things that you buy that, the bag of peanuts, everything you you buy and you go, I'm going to have a couple bites of this. I'm not going to finish it, but I want to yeah. taste. And then by the end of the game, you've got an empty bag <laughs> and you're like, I really just did that. Yeah. I bought one of the jumbo roasted peanuts and I was like, I'll just have a few of these. I got started and I was cracking. I <laughs> ate the entire thing. <laughs> You're just like suck it on the whole like, <laughs> before you put it in because it's just so good and salty. I love me some ballpark nacho cheese. You got that in that corner? Oh, yeah. oh my god! You'd be like, you would just put your finger in that and when you, when see, you yeah, get down. <laughs> <every time. laughs> I want to This disgusting. Like Taco Bell, like when you get that cheese, <laughs> you can feel the rich, the inner rich. Yeah. <laughs> When you guys go to a movie theater, are you the one ordering like chips and nacho cheese? I think it's horrendous yeah. when people order that shit at movie theaters. Mariah gets it and I pick at hers. I think the only appropriate thing in movie theaters are just popcorn, soda, and maybe some candy. You should not be, you it's shouldn't be dark. having a meal. It's too dark for nachos not, in the theater. It's not. I, I yeah, did. but then you get up and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I did that. <laughs> you, you'd be looking at that shirt a few day, a few weeks later going, that's from the nachos. At the, that was at the theater <laughs> i remember once you know how i order at restaurants i order everything yeah right? so i remember one time in the movie theater i ordered everything, everything. right i had I, I spread out my knees and i just <laughs> <laughs> i just said the nachos the hot dogs <laughs> your I, last supper the, the sample platter everything and I'm, <laughs> and i probably looked <laughs> like a disgusting fucking pig just sitting there <laughs> because i had it was just for myself it wasn't for anybody else i wasn't sharing it I, like, Somebody I tries to squeeze by you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. One second. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a I'm a messy popcorn eater though. Me too. And I think I'm, I'm doing my job. And then that moment you get up there, it's like, damn, is that you? <laughs> like I feel bad, but like you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, did you ever eat at Logan Steakhouse, or did you ever have like a place in your town that would just Roadhouse? They would give you so the peanuts, peanuts on peanuts. the floor. Like, okay. We're in a movie theater. It's so what, okay. There if I was get a pl- there was a place in every state that had one. There's called mm-hmm. a different name. Was it owned by the same Roadhouse? Texas Roadhouse? Texas Roadhouse is like a really big chain. They're they're pretty much everywhere. And it's called Texas Roadhouse. There's no Florida Roadhouse. <laughs> Dude, there's a Texas Roadhouse at the bottom of the Burj Khalifa. It's no something? way. Right next to a Red Lobster. I think I said this on the podcast when I came back from Dubai. But that was like the craziest thing out there. Texas Roadhouse. There's a Red Lobster and it's packed. Mm-hmm. Texas Roadhouse packed all in Dubai. There's a Cane's Chicken Fingers. Packed. Down at, yeah, packed. Yeah, that's probably exciting to see that shit over there. Yeah, there's like... You know, I bet you it's better than here. Probably. Bet you it's better than here. Oh, yeah. Probably make it real good. They like they take, their that, time. <laughs> they take their time with the lobsters and... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they meat. let you throw like, the peanuts on the floor anymore. I think they stopped that. Uh, bring it back. <laughs> Your hands chopped off. <laughs> you you should, we should just start doing it at Five Guys, too. Oh, yeah. Five Guys does that. that. It just doesn't make sense at their restaurant, though. 
I, I want to love five guys and their shit slaps, but I'm like, I'm sorry, $25? It's insane. And I got a cheese. It's that ex- wait, that's how much it costs? That's, it's like Target. You go in there, you think you're buying one thing, and then they ring it up and you're like, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like embarrassed. You can't be like, yeah, you're like, <laughs> get, they're, they're cool. already building it. They're cool. Like, you're like, you don't even want to b- give a big fuss. <laughs> you're like, all right. A burger, fries, and a drink is $25. It ends up ending. It ends up like. Well, that. what what else are you ordering there? What else they got at what a place? I like don't that? even try to order the fries because I mean, I'm just trying to be. <laughs> Chip, Chipotle nowadays is like twenty five bucks for one person. Don't even get me started on Chipotle. <laughs> you see that kid like on TikTok in- who rants at Chipotle? Like, <laughs> hey Chipotle, this is a measuring cup. <laughs> you could actually make a cup. We would know the 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 right portions we are getting yep. every time. You guys seem to use this. Oh, a spoon. Now a spoon. It is crazy <laughs> that they take the spoon. Not only they pick it up, but then they shake, shake it a little bit. Yeah. Shake Where it. half the chicken falls off the spoon. And this it's a spoon. <laughs> and they're trying not to make eye contact with you. Can I? Because you're looking down and they're like, <laughs> can I? And then when you ask for a little bit more, sure. The second one, big fucking scoop. <laughs> they just like fart. it's almost like an attitude. Is yeah. this enough? <laughs> it's like, oh, now I have triple, but I got to pay for it. <laughs> like it's like they're gonna get the fucking audit you know what i mean like if they're putting a little and you want them to like you think that they're being nice and then suddenly they pull out this like marker that's like this one had double like oh they oh, and you, they always ask too it'll come up and be like what do you get and i'm just like <laughs> <laughs> yeah what do you get triple chicken <laughs> <laughs> fuck off uh oh and they're guac is it just me or is it just avocado Smushed in a cup. Like, where, where's the ingredients? Guacamole they, has salt, has lime juice. They used ha- to have really good guac. It's just, Wait, it's just gu- avocado. It's, their guac used to look like it was like gelato. Yeah. Like, it was like, it was, no, but it would, you would see ingredients in there, like yeah. guacamole, but there's no ingredients. It's oh, just green. No. It's That's green true. putty. It's green putty. It looks like the one that you get from like a grocery store now and you peel the wrapper. Yeah. On top and or the just, powder. You seen the powder shit? Mm. The powder shit where you, it's just avocado and then the powder and it's guacamole. That's, I think that's what they use. Ugh. The thing it's is the guacamole insane. though, you better eat it that day. Cause the moment you put like Chipotle, the hot guacamole in it, in your refrigerator, <laughs> you're like, I'm going to save that for lunch. <laughs> you, you, you open that up. You're like, it's oh, crazy wow. how, like, how quick avocado, mm. like that shit goes bad. And it's not that bad to eat. Like I'll eat a brown avocado. Like I'll eat yeah. some. It's crazy how quick everything goes bad in the fridge now. Oh yeah, we were talking about that. Have you noticed in your fridge, just you'll buy like a thing of strawberries, right? It's in your fridge. The next day, there's a ready white fungus growing on it. Like it's just so quick. Food is just going bad at an alarming, like just quickly. (laughs) It's crazy. You don't notice that in your fridge? I guess. I'm always Nothing like, is lying. It's because well, he buys it and then he goes out of town for three weeks. She she buys all the berries and fruits. I don't get that. I don't. I get fr- I use frozen berries if I'm making a smoothie. But now I, you're I a big postmater, and then you save the food for later. Celery. Oh yeah, that's when I was like living here. But now I'm like, yeah, I got I have a wife that we could like. Oh, buy. You, you make food now every oh, day. Oh, yes. good, good, good. Cooking good. all the time. Uh, but I just love celery. Just stalks of celery that are peanut already butter? popped right there. Get get some peanut butter. But just do you do, snack do you on celery do, all throughout the day. Do you ever do ants on a log? Yeah, I love ants on a log. What's, or a bug uh, in a boat. Wait, what's yes. ants on a log? Ryan made them for me not too long ago. Celery, peanut butter, raisins on top. Ew! I, I, I do it with chocolate chips though. Yeah, chocolate. Wait, chocolate chips on celery? Peanut butter in the, like the little gap. No, I know, but celery as the as. Try it. Oh, they put anything on their goldfish. Yeah, you can go crazy. Oh, uh, movie recommendation of the week. Um, Equalizer three. Uh, Society of the Snow <gasps> on Netflix. Uh, it's a it's a plane crashing movie. Oh, yeah, um, it's based on a true story. It's really, really traumatizing, especially if you don't like uh, flying. But it is such a crazy, beautiful story. And it's like to me, this story was all about like friendship and strength and pushing through and staying alive. And it's a true story. It was, it's, it's a, a w- true story. It's filmed in or um they filmed it in Sp- like it's filmed in Spanish. So yeah, it's Spanish, which if you're like, oh, foreign language movies aren't for me, it's not that dense. No, it it's really isn't. I so think easy to I think follow. this I think this was supposed to be filmed in Spanish because that like that's literally that's the true story. Yeah. That's they were all Spanish. It felt so much better watching it in Spanish. It felt more real to me. Like yeah. I felt like I was watching like a documentary or just like just something real. 
And the, the, I, the best plane crash I've seen, like, in oh my god, Matt, dude, really? dude, Matt, Matt, like, he he tells me he's like, you have to watch this plane scene I'll be, because for some reason I I'm scared of flying, but I love disaster yeah. uh, scenes. It's fucking weird. I don't know. But that was definitely one of the best plane crash scenes I've ever seen in my entire life. There's some special it, effects. It, it, it was like, like how that it looks like look they CGI. actually crashed a plane. Yeah. Like like how did they film that? I don't know. But and when that snow comes in that one part, I was like, what? Matt, Matt I I can't believe how like that they went through that. Yeah. Heath, you mm. you have to you. I think you'd it's appreciate Netflix, it because right? it's like they're in the wild. I think you you. It appreciate will be it. nominated for best foreign film, but yeah, it was nominated for Golden Globes, but it didn't win. But it, sh it should. But I'm not gonna lie, Heath. Watching this, I imagined like it was us, like it was me and you in that plane. Like, Surviving. what would we do? What? Mm. How would we? move forward and what would we do in that situation <laughs> patricia we were watching we we're like kill us now like there, there, there was a point where i was like no nope. i was thinking like being cold for that long i think my body would rather just die instead of just be alive because it's just torture yeah it's a, it's a torture chamber it, mm. i i really i know you don't watch like a ton of movies but i really want you to watch this i think you'd actually really like you said it was movie. on netflix right it's on netflix the way it was shot shot beautifully oh it, I, acting, I feel like I've never, actors, I've never seen that style of film. It was, it felt like new to me, like the style of the way it was filmed. It's a foreign it was so film. refreshing. Uh, it's so cool when you see a foreign film though, because they're doing all this stuff that's big in their culture that that they want to express. That yeah, is it your typical American director? Uh, Heath, it'd make you want to like go to the wild. I think. I think it'd make <laughs> you want to go camping. I swear to God, probably. <laughs> it'd make you want to like go out there. Or when you were a kid, did you ever like see a movie and you were like? I'm gonna walk out this movie a little different. <laughs> like I saw Treasure Planet when I was a kid. I was like, that guy's so cool. I'm gonna be like the guy from Treasure Planet. <laughs> I'm gonna get an ear piercing and try to f windsurf the skies. I, I walked out feeling like something watching Spy Kids 3D. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. I thought it was better than Junie B. Jones. Junie B. Jones. <laughs> Carmen Cortez? Carmen Cortez. <laughs> Why did I say Junie B. Jones? Carmen Elizabeth, I'm going to meet Abla Cortez. True access granted. <laughs> I thought it was the coolest thing. So one of my like close friends back like that lived in West Palm Beach, her friend was cousins with Alexa Ver... Ver Alexa uh, Vega. Vega. And I, I <laughs> fell... <laughs> the amount of people I told that I was connected to her... <laughs> That's I so thought funny. it was insane. Yeah, that they were that close to a my celeb. friend's <laughs> friend's cousin was. Boy, he spread that shit. Like I, wild. Spread I know, it like why? There were some fuck. girls in my town who saw like Jake Ryan from Hannah Montana at a hibachi grill, and I felt like it was my duty to go <laughs> around and tell everybody else <laughs> that story. <laughs> but I wasn't even there. <laughs> I would try. I would try asking my parents, "Could we go to the hibachi grill that he was at?" Even though that kid is long like, gone. Nobody gives a fucking shit <laughs> about you. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I remember watching him being like, "Damn, <laughs> why am I not him in high school?" <laughs> this guy. Oh yeah. yeah. Because I was at the time. I was watching Hannah Montana in secret. Anyways, <laughs> like you, I would never tell Yo Zane. You see that new episode of Hannah Montana? Like you, yeah. every you, guy, you were every, truly, you were truly watching that show. Me and my dad watched that shit every day. Your dad watched Hannah Montana. My dad loved Hannah. Oh, Montana. what a loser! I watched it, but it you it, you wouldn't. You talk didn't about talk it. about it. We were Everybody, too old to watch it. Was it was all in silence. I didn't miss an episode. I have yeah. a you, you know, you know what show I watched as a kid secretly. Kim Possible and Teenage Robot. Kim, oh, okay. <laughs> Kim that? Possible was good though. What was that? With the, the sitch. Something Teenage Robot. Jenny, Jenny Robot. Jenny the Teenage Robot. I just want to know, you know the Even Stevens cast, how they have like a podcast and yeah. What are they talking about? <laughs> like, like after a while, I feel like you got to run do, out do of hear, Do you hear the shit that they're talking about on the podcast? Like, is it? <laughs> they're just going off the road. The girl was talking about how she was giving like blowjobs. Like Christy Carlson Romano? <laughs> no, no, oh. no, no. Sorry, it's that Ned's Declassified podcast. Oh, yes. You that see one. those clips, I'm like, oh my God, this is, I feel like I shouldn't be saying this. <laughs> 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 this I'd have been a perfect what, coconut head. What the character. was? The, yeah, you would have. Uh, Jordan, why was that so funny? <laughs> what was the show Steve Urkel was on? It was like, did I do that? Family Matters. Do you remember uh, Steve Urkel's car? No. The little BMW and the door is in the front. 
What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a real car. That looks like something Mr. Bean would drive. You walk up to the front. <laughs> Like a fridge. Yeah, why aren't more cars <laughs> like that, actually? I it think makes sense. I think it's, it makes sense. You never have to open your door and ding somebody. Yeah, You're like... You get a car <laughs> <laughs> Did I do that? Matt is like the white version of Steve Urkel. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, <laughs> did I do that? <laughs> all right, all right. All right. Let's, let's get to the one and wind. Close us out, baby. Let's close, let's close us out. Thank you guys so much for tuning into another episode of Zane and Heath Unfiltered. Uh, as always, we do have a Patreon where we post bonus content. We have these unwind videos where we keep the cameras rolling for 20 to 30 minutes after every oh, episode. Cool. We also have a private Discord on there. We do live Q&As, high drunk episodes, all that good stuff. And we do have some news coming up very soon on the Patreon. So make sure to check that out. Patreon.com right. slash Zane and Heath. You get all that for $5. A month um you can check out these episodes audio form every monday on all the podcast platforms and we post video versions of these episodes on our youtube channel on tuesdays at youtube.com slash zane and heath that's right baby also make sure to check out the <clears throat> best coffee in the world cremota mm -hmm. uh, cremota.com you can get it we've got cake cups we've got bag coffee we've, we've got, got tumblers got drinkware we've got all sorts of accessories and a bunch of different flavors of coffee uh we also have matcha uh, so yeah, again, Cremota.com to try it out. All right. We'll see you unwinders in five seconds. Love you. Pesos, peace and pesos, uh, X and O's and love you. Love you. Mm. Bye baby.